Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of In the Dark. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we're immediately picking up after the premieres, uh, where the premiere ended. And so they're getting their new identities and everything, but obviously they have to, like, uh, they got their new names and everything, which is just, I love that Felix is the only one that has a complaint about his new name, because he's like, why does it feel like I just got, like, two bad first names to put together um but ultimately they've got to get ready to cross over into canada and kind of getting like they got to get the actual uh like passports and stuff from someone else so but while they're driving there felix is the one that suggests that they have to split up because it's like yeah they're going to be looking for three friends and a blind lady and her dog so we can't all be together he's even suggesting that they be separated for a year and then they can come back together um which I was like, at first I was like, oh, they're going to do that? I didn't even think that potentially would be, well, a possibility. I didn't even think about that. I mean, it makes the most sense. Because um, being together as a group is more likely to get them caught than going separate. But um, obviously for Murphy, it's like, no, no, I can't do that. I need Jess with me. And even Jess is like, yeah, I need to go with Murphy. So it's like, all right, you two stick together. Well, you still have to go separately, but then you two eventually meet up and everything. So... Uh, we got, you know, it's like, this is kind of the end uh, to a certain extent. So they stop by a near mot uh, nearby motel as they kind of like wait things out. Well, no, at first at the gas station, Murphy was, I love that Murphy's like, yeah, uh, this sucks. And then Jess is like, I know having to give up our entire lives. I know how tough that is. And Murphy's like, what? No, I'm talking about Max. He won't even talk to me. He's being such a baby. And Jess is like, oh, that's the most frustrating thing because Jess is like, I'm literally giving up my entire life. And all this, because let's face it, Murphy, you've set the dominoes in motion. Yes, once again, it's not 100% on Murphy. It's easier to blame Murphy because she's like, she put in her 65%, but everyone else put in their percentage as well, leading to the current events. You know, everyone played their own part, getting uh, everyone to where they are. I, I can't stress that enough. Murphy's getting the brunt of it. Yes, she's kind of the focal point of a lot of it. She's the core of a lot of it. But at the same time, like I said, I said it last episode and I'm saying it again. They are the ones who kind of chipped in their own percentage to getting to where we are right now. But you can tell Jess kind of was so upset by that. It's like, oh, uh, I'm opening up my heart about the fact that this situation where we all have to give up our lives, kind of because of you, Murphy. And you're just kind of like, oh, you're only, you know, you're being selfish again because all you cared about is like where, where you and Max stand. So it's like, right, is there any, uh, you know, you basically try to get him drunk or whatever. And it's like, uh, is there any tequila? That makes him horny. And then even Max smells like he's like, I thought you were just getting water. She's like, I thought, you know, I thought we could celebrate. He's like, yeah, whatever, get in the car, you know? So, um, they don't want Max to go off by himself in particular. Felix doesn't because Felix is like, I don't trust that you won't just like kind of leave us and just go off on your own. Uh, Murphy's like, fine, I'll go with him. He's like, no, Jess, let's do that. Which, they've never had a lot of time together, but this is the first time that they did. Well, before that, they did all get to individually make their goodbyes. I don't think we've ever met Jess's parents over the course of this series, I don't think. Because uh, she talks about, she talked to her mom, Murphy talked to her uh, mom, uh, Max's dad, and Felix said that he, um, and then he talked to his mom, which we met his mom. So Max and Jess are the only ones we haven't met family members from, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong, I could be misremembering, but do correct me in the comments down below. I don't think we ever met anyone from Jess's family, so that was interesting. But on the ride, uh, Jess and uh, Matt's kind of bond over the fact, you know, it's like, right, she's like, I, you know, talking to her mom was kind of sad because she wanted to hug her mom one more time. But for Max, she kind of, lo he looks at this more positively than a lot of the others because it's like, right, I can get a, I'm going to get a job as a line cook. He's like, eventually maybe own my own restaurant. It's a, it's a new start for him because he doesn't have his past kind of dragging him down. So he has a lot, you know, it's a, it's a new life and stuff like that. So he's kind of embracing it and, you know, Jess is kind of happy for him, you know. And even when they're sitting down at the bar, they kind of bond. Well, he kind of finally admits he opens up about his fact. Actually, I didn't call my dad. He's like, there's actually literally no one in my life that um, would miss me, like, you know, worry about me being gone. She's like, oh, that's not true. I think it is. I think that's what frustrates and why he's so pissed at Murphy. Because despite everything, Jess, Felix, and Murphy are the only people he has. He doesn't even have Darnell anymore. But, like, that was his best bud. But it's like, he doesn't have any of them anymore. He doesn't have any of that. Like, all he has is this. Like, we don't know what his family circumstances are that makes him go, like, yeah, no one would miss me. 
Um, but like the fact is that for him, it's like I'm in this situation because I went to Murphy because sadly Murphy is only one of the few people in the world that actually does care about me. And Felix and Jess do as well. But it's like for him, it's like Murphy's legitimately for him, like heart to heart, the only person that would care if something happened to him or he disappeared, you know? Which I guess the argument could be because of like everything between her and Josh, her breaking up with him and everything last episode, last season probably just like stuck it in a little deeper. Why it hurts that much? Because she is someone that he kind of put his heart and soul into that relationship. He kind of gave it his all just for her to kind of, you know, in his mind, probably like just toss me away like it's nothing. I think that's just the most frustrating thing because he does care about her, but he's just trying to pretend not to because, um, She's kind of all he has, and he doesn't want to admit that because it's annoying to admit that a person who kind of threw you away is kind of all you have. It's a, it's a very like almost very, it's it's a it's a very toxic relationship in that regard, which is interesting to think about. Um, yeah, I think toxic would be a better word. Uh, but um, at the same time, at the motel and everything, like they're trying to print stuff off for pretzel, um, and they're trying to distract Hannah, who's uh, in charge of the room and everything. And so, Murphy was trying to get everything started with the pork rinds and um, uh, the booze, trying to, like, wait for Max to get back. But, like, Hannah's off dealing with um, stuff in the room so they can keep her distracted while Murphy, like, prints pretzel stuff behind the desk. And then the cop rolls up because he's like, yo, I'm looking for a blind woman and her three friends. And Murphy has her pretend, like, oh, yeah, like, uh, uh. And she warns uh, Felix, who warns Jess and Max, who Max got so frustrated accidentally it's like wait we got to abandon the car because they're looking for this car and it's like oh all right he's like screw it. I don't care if we get caught oh you don't have to worry about getting caught in the vehicle because you lock the keys in there it's just he was so for him it's just like once again when it rains it pours it's just like everything's going wrong he's just he's frustrated about the situation but also like the fact is I think on top of that once again not actually having anyone to call pretending like he had someone to call I think that's even sadder it's like you didn't have to front in front of everybody but I think for him it's like if he did like if he didn't like at least pretend to have someone to call they would like, wait oh you don't have anyone to call they would have felt pity for him and it just I think he just wanted to seem strong and fine in front of everybody he's trying to keep it all together but just in that moment it's just kind of the ultimate frustration or just like oh don't touch me Jess just leave me alone you know so uh, but at the same time, there's the situation, um, uh, Felix and Hannah, I figured, I was wondering if it was going to turn into that, I thought Felix might take the lead with that, but to be fair, it's like, it's Felix, he would never take the lead in that situation, Hannah's like, I know what you're doing, he's like, you do? And they start making, I'm like, boy, that's, and, uh, Murphy tries to get the cop to leave, like, oh, we're closing the desk, uh, bye, he's like, I'm gonna wait out here, and she's like, yeah, sure. Good night. He's like, night. She's like, just let yourself out. And goes into the room, and, and Hannah's like, topless. She's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. And Murphy's like, no, 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 it's good. It's fine. You know, like, yeah. You know, uh, we did. It's like, wait, do you guys do this thing often? And they're like, yeah, when we find the right person. And which Hannah's kind of like, oh, I I'm glad to know I'm the right person. That that's cool. That's pretty dope. And it's like, oh, can we have a sidebar? And it's like, oh my god. And I love that, like, Felix is trying to talk out of, talk him out of this. And, like, Murphy's like, you, you know, you're the only person to ever try and talk themselves out of a threesome. And he's just like, because it's awkward and crazy and weird. And then I love that the fact is, Felix like, so wait, is there kind of a thing between you? And she's like, oh, no, I'm sorry. He's like, all right, a simple no would have been fine. It's just you're a little too gun ho about this threesome. For her, it's like, I wanted to have sex with Max, but you were here. And he's like, well, I'm glad I'm here for you to masturbate, too. That's, that, that's my only sole purpose. Because what's well, frustrating, like, because I thought it was interesting. Jess and Max are the ones who are the most mad at Felix. But to be fair, I think it's because... Felix is always very passive aggressive, so it doesn't come off any different than normal. But I think it's also like they, you know, Jess is in a position of she's been like that's been her best friend since they were kids. Um, Max, it was an intimate relationship. Felix and her have always had like a contentious relationship. You know, it's gone, it's been on a rise since the beginning of the series, but it's always been kind of like a back and forth between them. But, you know, Felix kind of, he's like, you know, the fact that she's spending all this time worried about how Max, what about me? Like, you know, you don't give it to him about me. She's like, of course I do. Because like, he was like, I'm one, like, you're one of my best friends. And she's like, you're one of my best friends. It's just the fact of the matter is I've always counted on the fact is I've been able to, like, be around you, have to deal with you every day, you know. And now I'm not going to have that. So, you know, it's easier not to kind of admit it. But, yeah, I'm going to miss you. You're, you're my best friend, too, you idiot. And I'm like, oh, that's sweet. It's like, all right, so are we really about to do this threesome thing? I was like, no way. There's no, there's no way they're actually going to do it. And then she's like, yes, 
And he's like, don't don't make fun of me or anything. She's like, as long as you don't do anything weird, it'll be fine. They kind of fist bump. And they go in there and it's like, all right, are you ready? And it's like, right. Murphy and Hannah start making out. Then Hannah and um, Felix. And then you get to the moment like Murphy and Felix and it's a little awkward. I was like, dude, this is amazing. And then they start kissing a little bit and just kind of like, they pull away. But then like, they start getting into it. I'm like, oh. I don't know whether they just got caught up in the flow of things. I was like, wait, is this about to become a thing? Or? I was like, nah, it can't, right? Oh, that's going to be complicated. I thought at one moment they'll break apart. But it's like, nah, we see the aftermath of it. I was like, they went through it. The, I Legitimately, I'm curious about how that worked out. Whether like there was a, whether there was quite a bit of Murphy and Felix. It almost looked like Murphy was kind of like, I think it's, she's kind of conflicted. Because like obviously she has Felix for Max. But I think there's a part of it that's like, Honestly, she kind of enjoyed it, you know, especially because it's like, oh, Felix is like, no, nah, I'll, I'll check to see if, uh, you know, if there's any guests or anything. She's like, oh, I'd call you um, um, selfless, but we both know or something like that. We both know that's not true, right? I was like, dude, I was like, it started off as an awkward thing the most awkward threesome in history, but also I'm like, that's the most amazing thing ever that that happened in this show. That's amazing. Cause just because of how weird it's going to be for Murphy and Felix. Um, but uh, obviously everything worked out cause a cop left. And as co like Felix is looking at, he's smiling. I'm like, you actually, I think, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm thinking Felix might've caught feelings in that moment. I mean, I mean, to be fair, it's someone you've been around. Because that's a, that's a crazy thing. Going from best friends to something else, that blind can happen so fast. You know, so um, that's that's the crazy thing. So I can definitely see like him catching it. I mean, especially because it's a, someone you know so well. I mean, you've been worked day in and day out. So you know her personality so well. You know her habits so well. So, like, there's something to that. Like, I, I can definitely see, like, that. I mean, being such an intimate thing like that, like, that could easily make you catch some feelings. I, I don't know. Um... Which, like I said, it's interesting that their bonding went that way where you had Jess and Max's bonding just be over the fact is of like, yeah, saying no to Murphy, you know, which Jess is kind of like, she's like, I, yeah, I wish I could say that. I think at the end of the day, and I think this has come up before. I mean, it definitely has come up before. Just as much as Murphy needs Jess, Jess is kind of codependent as well. Like she kind of like she I think. It's nice feeling needed. It's annoying to a certain extent, but I think that's what pisses Jess off the most. It's like, right, because it's not just that Murphy needs me. I have to be at her beck and call. It's because outside of that, I think for her, it's like, what do I have? I don't have a relationship anymore. All I kind of have is this particular relationship. So it's like, I think maybe in her own way, maybe Jess kind of feels like this is all she'll ever have. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what to really, you know, say about that. Um, but, uh, Murph, Max was telling uh, Jess, like, when it comes to Murphy, next time she needs you, say no, which we know how that works out. This episode. Because I think for her, it's a situation of considering the circumstances, but also I think there's all, there's a, because like Max and uh, Jess talk about the fact that they kind of care too much a little, like, they're always like caring about other people too much. And it's, I, I just think, I think Jess kind of feels like without that, she kind of doesn't, um, that's like the only, like, longest lasting relationship she's had in her life was that because every other uh relationship kind of crashed and burned to a certain extent so for well different reasons so i think that's what that was you know all about so like this is one like this is the relationship you know it's kind of like you know it's a it's a that relationship in its own right can sometimes be toxic as well. So I think it's just kind of like the roller coaster of just how up and down that can be. Whereas Max is trying to let her go. Jess tries to as well. But I think just Jess isn't at the point she can despite everything. She tried to and still ended up winding, uh, winding up right next to Murphy and still not, you know. So we'll kind of have to wait and see on that. But um, the last time Felix and uh, Murphy... Uh, we're in the room together. He was looking almost like he wanted to say something good, but it's just like, ah, it's weird. Should I say anything? It's like probably knowing like, ah, Murphy doesn't feel that same way, but it's just like, also just the awkwardness of like, right. She's not saying anything to you just because it's like, yeah, let's, let's just, that happened. Let's just pretend it didn't. And let's not talk about it. even later on when they're kind of hugging goodbye and everything. Um, it's just like, it was an awkward 
super awkward goodbye. It is messed up that Max's goodbye included him saying goodbye to Jess and like saying goodbye to Pretzel, but completely ignoring Murphy. I'm like, and even Jess being like, oh, he's a dick. It's so interesting how you play both sides of the fence in that regard. Um, kind of having, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what Murphy and Jess's relationship will look like in this season. Um, another element to this, some other things to keep in mind. Obviously, uh, the Chief calling in um, Gene and Josh about what they're doing. It's like, when my boss comes in, you shut up. You don't say anything and leave it at me. She doesn't want to talk to the Chief. She wants to talk to Gene. And it's like, right. She's like, well, the fact of the matter is you're going to run the case. And it's like, yeah, but he's in uh, narcotics. It's like, yeah, but now he's transferred over to uh, homicide. Uh, what about Josh? It's like, well, I I should have let you know up front. I'm going blind. I don't care. Good day. And it's like, you know, Gene now knows, like, right. She's just like the chief. He was told like, oh yeah, like the chief and um, her are the same. Like they just care about the optics. So she won't want you exposing the chief because it'll just make her look bad. So if you're going to go after the chief, you might as well get some evidence first, not try to go up higher ranking and try to take him out that way. It's like, no, that's not going to work out for you. So they end up visiting Murphy's mom. And the thing is like, they're like, yeah, Mur you were crying. Like, so... I guess, based on what Murphy was saying, it made her realize, like, oh, Murphy's... I wonder what about that made her think, like, oh, Murphy was going away. Like, I guess she, she doesn't know the circumstances, but she knew... I guess the call made her realize, like, not unless that, not unless that was something more personal that... I, that's because I was like, yeah, like, at least from what we gleaned of Murphy's conversation, there was nothing in it. But I guess it's like, her mom was like, no, 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 babe, like, hold on, like, you're just... Dropping this on me, so what? Why does it feel like you're disappearing? She's like, not unless she ended up telling her mom a little bit more than she. I don't know, because she did have to go. I'm going, mom. I have to hang up, mom. I have to go. You know, or was that Felix that had to do? No, I, th I think that was no. That was definitely Murphy. So that's why I'm like, maybe her mom gleamed a little bit more for those circumstances. I don't know. We'll ultimately have to wait and see uh, on that part. But like, Gene and Josh did, you know, get the. Um, pay phone address and stuff like that from um, wh where the call came from so but the fact is that she's willing to lie because at first she's like yeah they're on the app unless you're like where she call you from her cell phone well we've got proof that her cell phone she hasn't made any calls from her cell phone so are you still sticking with that yes she is so it's like she doesn't want to give them an idea where to even start looking for murphy it's like despite all they throwing it, it's like for her it's like it's got to be a misunderstanding but regardless i'm gonna protect my baby i, I don't know i was like that was surprising that she would she was so willing to kind of throw them, you know, the wrong, um, trail for that, I just, oh, that was fascinating, really, you know, um, but they were able to, you know, obviously get photos of the, at the orange Aztec from the, um, uh, gas station they had dropped, stopped by at, so, um, another angle to this is Darnell, you know, going to, um, I'm blanking on home dude's name now, the biz, the dude they went in business with last uh, season, it's like, right, he wants to take over Nia's operations, and Darnell's like, yeah, that's why I'm here, so it's like, right, so because of that, I'm going to, um, I'll make sure all of Nia's people, like, lock up with you and know what's what, but I also need protection for Murphy and your friends, and he's like, they murdered your sister, and you still trying to protect them for him? It's like, my sister never protected me, and it's just like, I just can't have any more blood on my hand. I mean, to be fair, he killed Jules. Back. She gave the order for Sam to kill Jules in season one, so like, yeah, you, you know what's what now. Well, that was more so on Dean, but still, like, like you know that she had um, Jules killed, so... That ruffled your feathers a little bit, despite that being your sister and everything. But they had their complicated situation regardless. But all frame like, I just don't want any more blood on my hand. I don't want more people dead when I could have prevented it. Or you know, despite everything, that's a crew he cares about. You know, so um, I was like I said, curious about the whole um, Jess thing when at the end she was kind of hugging Murphy. I was like. Is she going to tell Murphy, like, we're going to meet up, but in actuality, they're not going to? I thought it was going to be a thing of, like, right, we're going to meet up, but in a, but um, I'm actually going to abandon you type of thing. I was wondering if that was going to be the case, but then Jess kind of gives her a bear. It's like, yeah, if you don't have, if I'm not there, to, like, you know, pretend it's me and everything. So, I don't know. It, it's interesting. So, I was curious, but uh, I guess we don't have to worry about it because Jess just straight up gets kidnapped. I'm assuming it's one of 
uh, Nia's people. Word hasn't gotten out about hands off of uh, off of them. I would assume because it can't be the cops. I don't think the cops would grab her like that. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe it's like Gene and Josh. Uh, but I feel like it had to be someone else. It had to be like one of Nia's people wanting revenge. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. So I guess their plans of staying separate for a year aren't going to go exactly the way they want it to. Uh, because it's going to be like, wait, Jess didn't show up. So at least Max might interpret that as, well, maybe Jess is deciding to go her own way. But it's like probably going to try calling her burner phone. And it's like she doesn't pick up. That's when they'll probably get nervous. So... That's where I think things are heading, but uh, it's really going to be interesting to see where things go uh, next episode with all of this. Um, but really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.